2018, going through uh, the 18th chapter of the Gospel of Matthew. We've already looked at the subjects of greatness and temptation, and today we move to the topic of hope. And it's an important message and a practical life reminder for all of us because every one of us needs hope in our lives. Where would we be without that hope of a better tomorrow? Hope in our salvation through Jesus Christ. Hope in an eternity with our Lord. Hope for better days to come. We have faith in a God who turned Good Friday into Easter morning. And in that, we carry hope with us through difficult times and hard times and our struggles. God is faithful, and in Him we can find hope. I invite you to take your Bibles and turn to the Gospel of Matthew, the 18th chapter, verses 10 through 14. Matthew 18, 10 through 14, I invite you to stand for the reading of God's Word if you are able. Take care that you do not despise one of these little ones, for I tell you, in heaven their angels continually see the face of my Father in heaven. What do you think? If a shepherd has a hundred sheep and one of them goes astray, does he not leave the ninety-nine on the mountain to go and search for the one that went astray? And when he finds it, truly I tell you, he rejoices over it more than the ninety-nine that never went astray. So it is not the will of your Father in heaven that one of these little ones should be lost. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. In my last pastorate, there was a little girl that absolutely loved giraffes. She had giraffe everything. Giraffe dress, giraffe tights, giraffe shoes, and plenty of toy giraffes. And her giraffes went with her everywhere she went. She carried a giraffe in her arms. And so she had tons of stuffed animal giraffes. Some of them she even had duplicates because everyone knew that she loved giraffes and they kept buying them for her. The giraffes multiplied. Well, one day I received a frantic call from the father. He said, uh, Emma has lost her uh, giraffe and I want you to check around the church to see if you can find it. We've searched everywhere. I don't think it's at the church, but... We have been everywhere where she has been over the past few days, and we can't find the giraffe. Will you look for me? And I looked throughout the church, and guess what? No giraffe. Well, the family had searched everywhere, in the house, in the car, and they were bound and determined to find this giraffe because the girl would not be at peace until the giraffe came home. Now, granted, there were a lot of other ones in her collection, but none could replace this special toy. She wanted each giraffe in its place. Well, eventually they did find it. I don't remember where, but they did find it. And all was peace once again in Emma's world. Now, some of you parents who have been there know what I'm talking about when parents go to this length to, to find a special toy, but some others of you are probably saying, how indulgent to spend that much time looking for one stuffed animal. How child-centered is that that you would go to all that effort to find a toy? After all, she had other stuffed animals. Forget the stuffed animal and move on. But I don't want you to focus on the search. I want you to focus on the nature of this little girl. What did this love and desire and seeking for the stuffed animal have to do with the little girl? First of all, I've already said this, but she really loved giraffes. Giraffes were her world, and without one, she could not be at peace. She had a large collection of giraffes, but if one was not in its place, the, her world was upside down. Everyone was important to her, and everyone had a name. The next thing you could say about the little girl is that she was diligent. In fact, she may have been a little bit OCD when it came to her giraffe collection, but she 
would not stop. She would not let her parents rest. Her focus was on finding her missing giraffe. She would never give up her search. In fact, I believe she may still be searching for that toy today if they had not found it. While this says a lot about that little girl, I think we can imagine God with such characteristics as we read the scripture for today. I want you to remember God loves you that much. And God's love for you is that diligent and that steadfast. The scripture reminds us that God loves us, God never gives up on us, and God is always searching and seeking. The scripture says he desires that not one of the little ones, one of his children, should be lost. He loves all of his children with that kind of love. All are valuable in the eyes of the Lord, and Jesus offers us this parable just to show us how valuable we all are. He uses the illustration of a shepherd. And like a shepherd, a shepherd will not rest until all his sheep are back. What good shepherd would not leave the 99 and go down the mountain and find the lost sheep? That one sheep is that important to the Lord. That one sheep means everything. And so it's not just uh, the mathematics of the odds are percentages it's the one that is valuable and you are that one you are that one and when the one is found there is great celebration and rejoicing in the gospel of john jesus calls himself the good shepherd in john 10 he identifies himself as the good shepherd who lays down his life for his sheep he goes on to say that his sheep know him, and he knows the sheep. They know the shepherd by his voice, by his commands, and he knows all of his sheep by name. Jesus is the good shepherd who cares for his sheep, and if one goes missing, he will diligently search, no matter what. The good shepherd desires that not one should be lost. Now, while many see this passage as a message of evangelism and salvation, it's also a message of hope. And we need that kind of message of hope in our lives. You know, we live in a time where there's much we can't count on. Uh, so much is, is changing in our lives and in our world and in our society. But we can always count on this message of hope. We serve um, a God who will not give up on us. And we can have that kind of expectation in our lives. No matter what happens, God is with us. God loves us. And God is searching for us. And no matter what happens with our loved ones, we can have that assurance too. So what does this really mean for us? How does this translate to a practical lesson for us? First of all, it means that we can have hope because God never gives up on us. That is your value. You are highly valued in God's eyes. God values that, you that much. When you have days when you feel not valued, not accepted, not loved, remember God loves you that much. And you can always have hope and count on that kind of love in your life. We can trust God and know that God's love for us will never leave us. And I, I, we need that kind of hope. Uh, I was mentioning earlier how we live in such a changing society. I mean, technological changes. I looked at Laura with the speak and spell, and I thought, you know, what a different world we live in. How are we going to keep up? And um, so much is changing. Politics, technology, society. But we serve a God that is changeless. Hebrews 13, 8 says Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And his love for us never changes. Last week I was in the car and the school shooting in Kentucky, the news broke about it. And the commentator, instead of saying, 
oh, the horror, oh, the, the bad news, oh, two have died, her first words out of her mouth is, the first school shooting of the year has happened. And I thought, what a world we live in where the commentator says the first school shooting in the year has happened, meaning there'll be more to come. And while we live in a world that's changing that much and with that much hurt and violence, we can always count on the love of God. I find it comforting to rely on the fact that no matter what God is seeking, God is loving, even when we're astray, even before we are aware of it. There's a special word for this, and it's called provenient grace, which means the grace that goes before. God loves you even before you are aware of his love, like a baby. God seeks you even when you are astray. God has love for you in all times and all situations and longs that not one should be lost. And having that kind of grace and presence in our lives means that we should never lose hope. So what does this mean for our loved ones? Well, it means that God loves them too, and he will never give up on them. You know, we may have some family members that we struggle with, that we're praying for, that we wonder about, that we might even have given up on, but God has never given up on them. God desires that all should be in loving, growing relationship with him. That's God's will for every life, according to this scripture. Do not give up hope because God does not give up searching and loving people. Keep trusting. Follow the lead of the Holy Spirit. Because sometimes if we follow our lead in this, we'll mess up. But listen to the Holy Spirit and follow the Holy Spirit's lead. And God will guide you. And realize that patience and God's timing are often part of that equation, too. Sometimes it's not our timing, but it's God's timing, and we have to trust God in that. I had um, knew someone close to me who had gotten out of church. She had uh, grown up in the church, a great relationship with God, but as time had, had gone on, she had strayed from the church. And any time uh, I was in a group where they would ask about praying for relatives or friends, praying for someone uh, to know the Lord or know a deeper relationship with the Lord, I would always think of this person. And I prayed for her. And um, prayed for her and prayed for her. This went on many years. And eventually she did come back to church and did come back to a loving relationship with the Lord. And it wasn't me. Uh, it was actually a family member who invited her to church and got her back in the habit of a growing relationship with Jesus. And while it may not have been directly me who brought her back, um, I believe my prayers were a foundation in that. We never know how our prayers, our words, our witness, God can use that. So we just have to be open and be that instrument of hope. Now, I have never lost a sheep before. In fact, my experiences with sheep are they're docile in the petting zoo or they're really mean farm animals. But I have lost a child before, and I'm going to tell you, in those moments of losing my children, I think the world's coming to an end. I panic, I search, and I know in that moment there's nothing I wouldn't do to get my child back. I would search, I would be fierce, I would search and search and search and never give up. And when I look at this parable, I think about a God who loves us that much, who would search and search and search and never give up. I stand in awe of that kind of love, and we all need that kind of love in our lives. Because while the world and others may try to suck that love out of you, God's trying to pour it into you and those that you love around you. And it's that kind of love that gives us hope no matter what. And I think it's very interesting, as I've been preaching on this chapter, the flow of, of Jesus' teaching, because he talks about little ones and how important uh, all are in the family of Christ. He talks about temptation and how we shouldn't be a stumbling block to our brothers and sisters and how 
we need to be careful that we don't go astray. But then he moves to this point of, even if you do go astray, I love you, I will seek you, I will find you, I will know you. I will go to the ends of the earth to find you. That is amazing love. And then he moves to this lesson about conflict. How God loves, we move from love to conflict. And in that, we see God's love for all children, even those, even those we disagree with, which is our lesson for next week. And you're invited back to hear that as we deal with practical life lessons in how to deal with conflict. Amen.